Okay, so we have four books here, and I've put them together for this video because these books are all books for beginners. That's what they have in common. They're also written by the same person. His name is Chris McMullen. He wrote all of these books, and I've made videos on these books before, but I wanted to talk about all of them together because I think they're all good beginner books, and they're all extremely affordable. If you're taking trigonometry or you want to learn trigonometry, this is a good book for that. And we'll talk about why it's good when we take a look at it. Out of all of the books here, my favorite one is this one. And that's because I feel that this one has the best examples. The examples in this book are harder to find than the examples in the other books. This is good for someone who's taking Calculus 3 or wants to learn some multivariable calculus on their own. This one covers a lot of Calc 1 topics and some Calc 2 topics. And this one is good, except I wish it had more advanced math. So it's really basic. This book is basically for absolute beginners. And we're going to take a look at the very specific topics that this book has in this video. So let's just start with maybe um, the trig book, because we, we talked about that one first. It's called Trigonometry Essentials Practice Workbook with Answers. And the author, again, is Chris McMullen. And these are workbooks, so that's something else that's unique about these. You actually write in these. You take a pen or a pencil, and you can write in the book. Let's just look at the contents, because that's the most important thing. Here's the contents. going to make sure you can see here. So converting degrees to radians, that's pretty easy. And then converting radians to degrees. Identifying the trig functions in right triangles, special right triangles. And it says memorize basic trig functions in quadrant one. That's really cool because that's how I do it. I use a memory trick to memorize the trig functions in quadrant one. And then from there, I use the reference angle method to find the rest. And he does it the same way, which I think is very professional and very good. Also, inverse trig functions, that's a hard topic, so he throws that in here. Law of sines and cosines, uh, applying trig identities, and then solving equations. So all of these are trig topics that historically trig students have a hard time with. So if you take a trig class, it's likely these are the things that are going to trip you up. In particular, the trig identities and the equations. That's uh, pretty tough for students, and this book provides tons of examples. Also, it has solutions. Let me just show you. It has answers to every single problem, right? So let me just show you the format of the book. Let's jump ahead to, like, you know, some deeper stuff. Let's look at, um, let's maybe look at some trig equations near the end. Okay, here we go. 11. It's the very last one. Okay. So here you see you have some trig equations and they're varying difficulty. So you have room to actually write in the book with a pen or, pa or pencil and then you can check your answer. And there's just tons of exercises. It's like too many. I mean, look at this. You've got six here. Okay, we have six there. Let's turn the page here. Hard to get the page turned there with my... Uh, I have my tripod in the way, so it's a little bit difficult. There we go. Six more here, so 12, 18, 24, right? And then you have, you still have more, and there's still more, right? There's still more, more, uh, more problems here. So look at that. Yeah. So tons, tons of, tons of examples. Perfect for anyone who wants to take trig uh, or wants to learn trig or is already taking trig. So if you're thinking about taking trigonometry, it's a good way to prepare for the course. If you're already taking it, it will help you. Maybe you're a calc, calc student and you forgot how to compute just basic trig function values. In that case, you would probably benefit mostly from chapter five and six and seven. Um, that would help you there. Because a lot of calc students, what they do is they rely on their calculator and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, people can do what they want to do, but it's better to do it in your head in my view. And this will teach you how to do that. So awesome. This one, in my opinion, is the best one out of all of them, and it's mainly because of the contents. So let me show you the contents of this book. Again, it's a workbook. So you basically sit down with you know this book and a pencil, and you can work out stuff. So partial derivatives, you're probably not going to need practice with that. Chain rule, that's pretty tough for students. Extreme values, it can be tough. Vectors are pretty easy, so is this stuff. And here it gets hard again. Divergence curl, things you might not have seen. And then some of these problems can be tricky. And then look at this. You even have surface and volume integrals, center of mass and moment of inertia, and line integrals. So these might be some topics that you might need extra examples in. And it's hard to find examples in textbooks. 
you know you can get it like the big book by Stuart and it covers everything and, and more than what's in these calculus books both combined but it's not going to have as many examples and it's not supposed to that's what this book is for it's a workbook so look at those look at that example look at that look at all of that math well here they give you a position vector let's just go through it the camera is not doing great on focus sorry about that so they give you the position vector and then you have to find the velocity. So the velocity of the position vector is the derivative. So you take the derivative, you just differentiate one term at a time. And then um, the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So it just goes through. And it asks you to find the unit tangent vector and principal normal unit vector at t equals 2. So, yeah, so to find the unit tangent vector, they give you the formula here. Basically, you normalize the velocity vector. So you take um, the velocity vector and you divide it by its magnitude. And there is another formula here. Uh, as well for uh, the principal unit normal vector. So pretty pretty intense, pretty intense uh, problem. There's the formula there for the principal unit normal vector. So pretty intense. And this book is good because it helps you solve those problems. And it does have answers to the problems as well. So you can see here solutions which is kind of nice. This one actually has solutions, not just answers. So they're worked out, whereas um, the trig one just had the answers. So that's that's a big deal, right? Let me look at that. All of the steps are there. So uh, the best one, in my opinion. This one's pretty good. Again, I wish it had more content. Um, let me just show you the topics on this one. I definitely think the multivariable one is better, but if you need some help with Calc 1, then this this can help you. It's got you know, all the basic stuff, most of its derivatives and integrals, as you can see there. So quite nice. And this one, this one also has solutions, right? The solutions are actually worked out in this book. So that makes it extra nice. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. This this book kind of reminds me of my videos. I have a lot of videos on the topics here. I have some videos on topics in this book, but not as many. So that's why in my view, I feel like these are more rare. There's less examples on the internet uh, of the problems that you find in this book. Whereas on the internet, it's really easy to find examples like this. Same thing here. This one, a lot of this math, you know, there's a lot of it already on the internet. It's pretty easy. This is super basic. This is for super beginners and I guess even though it's on the internet and you can find videos this is still a workbook so you can write in it and you can actually do math and that's the best way to learn math in my view is by doing it so here you can see the topics linear equations with integral coefficients that means there's no fractions and then chapter two it says fractional coefficients that basically means there's fractions and then some quadratic equations some factoring the quadratic formula some Cross multiplying and systems of linear equations. So very, very limited in topics in this one. It's very, very limited. But that's not to say it's a bad book. Um, I mean, it has answers to every problem. And if you read the reviews on Amazon, um, you're going to find that um, they're very good for all the books. And people do benefit from this book because a lot of people need help with stuff like this. I mean, you know, I look at this and I think, oh, it's really basic. It's really easy. And I usually don't... Um, you know, often review books like this, but I think there's a lot of people in the world who are just starting college. I remember when I started, I had to learn this stuff, you know? I mean, I didn't know how to do problems like this. These are the harder ones. These are the ones with fractions, and this book has tons of examples. Um, students really, really have a hard time with fractions. I remember giving tests, and I'd give them like, you know, one or two of these, and then give them one with fractions, and a lot of people would you know, they would get the one with fractions wrong. I mean, not, not like a ton of people, but like way more people will miss the problem with fractions. And look at all of these problems. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous how many examples you get in this book. So the books, they do explain things. For example, this is on simple quadratic equations. So there's an explanation in each book. Like it'll teach you the concept, right? So you learn the concept. There's examples. And then, and then you have then you have your, your workbook. You can write in it. You don't have to write in it, but it's a choice. So anyways, four awesome books, um, all very affordable. They're all modern books. I usually try to review, um, or I like to review. <laughs> I like to review uh, books that are like, you know, vintage or, you know, collectible because I collect math books. 
Uh, but I thought, let me do a video where I review some more modern books. These are books that are being published in today's era, um, and they're for students who want to learn, and they're extremely affordable, extremely affordable. These are all paperbacks, and they're fairly well made. So he also has books on uh, physics. I will be hopefully making a video on that soon. Those physics books he has are priceless, and I'll leave those uh, in the description as well in case you want to check out the reviews and stuff on Amazon. But his physics books are amazing. Um, it's even harder to find examples like that, and that makes them very valuable. Anyways, great books, kind of a long video. I just wanted to sit down and show you some books which I think are great for beginners. So Trig, awesome. Calc 3, multivariable calc, awesome. Calc 1, calc 2, it even has a little bit of calc 3, but it's mostly calc 1 and some selected calc 2 topics. And then very, very, very basics of algebra. If you want something more advanced, you know, get a, like a college algebra book or something, maybe like the one by Blitzer. That one's pretty good and it has way more math than this, so. Until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck. Keep doing math.